Uh, just kind of how would you gauge where the team is at at this point in the season versus maybe where you thought you'd be? And sure. Are you pleased? Yeah, I, I'm pleased with what we did in the second half against Duke because I really do think we turned a corner emotionally. As in, okay, we're going to fight back here. We're going to do some brawling and we're going to do what we need to do to get back in this ball game. And that's different than other times I've taken a Virginia team to Duke. And uh, yes, we've not done well against Duke, but that's, that's really well known. But um, we've also been thumped down there and not fought back. So I told the team after the game, I, fellas, I felt some of the 2019 team energy, that team that came back from those big deficits and found ways to win. And though we didn't win today, I'm feeling that we are starting to round that corner and emerge as really a team and uh, that's committed to sacrificing and doing whatever it takes. You you thought that after the home Duke game too, that, that you liked the fight in the mm -hmm. second half, that it didn't pack it in. You've also said in some big games that the team just doesn't seem to come out sharp, sure. big stage, and then settle in and, and play great lacrosse. Have you kind of found anything there? Well, what, what we have found since the first Duke game is that we're willing to come out and be the aggressor. The first time we played Duke, they were more aggressive. And forget the scoreboard, you felt the energy was on their sideline most of the game. If they got more penalties, they were the attitude, oh well, that's just the way we play. And that's usually what we do to our opponents. And so I've been really pleased with the North Carolina game and the second Duke game with how we came out and set a tone and an attitude and, and, and played with an edge. And, um, and granted, you don't want to be manned out too often, but that's where I really feel like we've turned that emotional corner and now it's just gelling this thing. I mean, we're here for each other. We're here in Charlottesville to learn, get a great education, but to come together and be there for one another and become a team. And, and I, I, honestly, I'm feeling that, even though we've lost a couple games recently. Is it taking, I'm sure it's taking longer than you want because you'd love to have it yes. week one, but is it taking longer than you expected? And is there time to get it done to do the things you want to do? I do, th there's, there's, there is time. Um, we can't waste too much more time, obviously. Um, and what a great challenge having the rivalry of Syracuse, Virginia upon us on Saturday, that this is a great opportunity for us to prove, are we turning that corner? Are we going to assert ourselves um, against the best competition? And Syracuse is playing as well as just about anybody in the country right now. And so this would be a heck of a challenge for us, but it's about us and just playing for the guy next year. To, you know, that altruistic emotion that this is for something bigger, bigger than ourselves. And again, I really do think it's a great conduit when it's Syracuse, Virginia, because this is a rivalry that goes back to Stars versus Desco 25 years ago, where it was about, all about this, the historic games that they played, the momentous 22 to 21 game that happened in 1997. You know, it is now our turn, you know, in this sort of genealogy, path, the genealogical path that we're upon, and. What is our legacy? You talk about that historic rivalry with Syracuse. Y'all are going vintage this week. Just kind of, I don't know if you saw the Jersey video, but just kind of what went what, what behind that decision and kind of, you know, how'd that come to be? Yeah, first of all, it's a fantastic production, isn't it? You know, what uh, our media people have done here at UK Athletics, it got, gave me goosebumps and chills. And, and um, I'm really, really fortunate to be well supported by an athletic department, administration, and budget, that we can have such an opportunity, spend a few dollars, and really glorify our past, and, and to get those old emotions back, right? And, and to create new memories here on Saturday. But that, that was really cool, wasn't it? Uh, it's Alumni Weekend. We're honoring the teams of the 80s. Um, some great teams there that were fantastically successful, and uh, we're excited to have the, uh, the men from 35 to 40 years ago come back. And so felt like the right thing to do to have these, uh, these throwback uniforms and uh, to doctor up a current helmet to make it look like an old helmet. Um, it's really exciting. Um, you talked about just kind of down the stretch and y'all all season long, you've been talking about building towards May. You got three games left until it turns to the calendar to May. Just kind of, what do you want to see out of them in the last three games? Yeah, I, again, continue to gel as a team that we're doing it for each other, that the energy on the sideline is palpable. We, our energy on the sideline is amazing. Um, but I still think we can crank it up a notch in terms of that commitment to one another. And where you see that is, it tends to be in team defense, because you have to have all six plus a goalie working together. Team offense in the 6v6 setting. When it's the whole sort of strategy and scheme relies on everyone, is it fluid? Is it connected? Or are there individuals going off and doing their own things? I want to continue to see that teamwork gel. Um, 
the energy's there, the commitment's there, the want to's there. And, um, and so I, I'm very grateful for the men I coach and uh, I'm really, really excited. We got another cultural Thursday coming up. Uh, we're gonna talk about genealogy and uh, it's, it's a, uh, you know, again, it's part of the legacy that we're trying to honor this weekend with the, uh, with the alumni weekend. Um, and again, what better way than, than uh, having Syracuse here? What a great, great rivalry this has been. What's uh, Syracuse doing well right now? Syracuse um, offensively is clicking. They are finding opportunities to score in multiple ways, but they're finding opportunities when no one seemingly is open, but their stick work and their trust that their team is gonna catch a pass even though he's covered. Uh, and the, the ability to put the ball right on their teammate's stick. Um, but they're combining that with some intense dodging by Joey Spelina, uh, the freshman, and then the transfer, Cole Kirst. Um, so they have some really good dodgers as well. But considering their efficiency of how well they're scoring, not only in man up where they're just about the top in the country at 57%, but also in the 66, you know, they're just, uh, you know, our hope is that they don't, they don't touch the ball 50-50. You know, that Petey Lasala can you know, make that sort of unfair that we just have the ball more because they are proving to me that when they get the ball, they can put it in there. Considering how good they've been man up and you want your guys to be the aggressor. Yes. How do you find that balance yeah. of? Exactly. It's like, we're not aiming to have zero penalties, but we don't want eight. And so it's like, can we have the errors of aggression as opposed to the errors of, you know, omitting and forgetting, you know, I oh, I went off sides or that's four face-off violations this half. So if we can limit the, um, you know, the penalties of mental mistakes, but still have our aggressive, yeah, three to four, somewhere around there. <laughs> it's a fine line you're walking. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you start getting to seven or eight, you're giving up five or six goals, yeah, exactly. you know, to Syracuse. So we, we got to keep that, but we, we, but we can't be tentative out there. We got to be the aggressor. Did you Syrac hear what happened to uh, Bobby Gavin? Did he transfer out? Uh, yeah, he's, he has stepped away from school. The last I knew he was in San Diego. Um, work in the real world had a real job okay. I, yeah. I knew he wasn't there anymore yeah. but i didn't see him land anywhere i was just yeah was, last i heard he was he was uh was in the finance cryptocurrency market huh. sort of work yeah <laughs> it's great yeah syracuse is in year two under gary gay where, where have you seen them improve the most from, from year one to year two sure um first of all i see improvement on the defensive end and it, and it's 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 almost like this story's been written before because i saw it from ourselves from our 2017 first season with Sean Kip and I to 2018, I saw some good steps forward, especially with the team defense. I see that with Coach Petromala, the assistant coach's defense uh, in Syracuse. They're, uh, they're more organized and they're coordinated and uh, the, the openings aren't as obvious. And so they're doing a really nice job advancing that program. And, and you just knew it, they're good coaches. They were gonna take that program to the thing. Um, offensively, there's a box lacrosse style to their play, which makes sense with Gary Gate, you know, one of the best lacrosse players, both in the field and the box, but he had a heavy box infusion into his game and his coaching style. That again, they, the way they run the crease picks, the way they feed each other, they don't need big openings and they trust each other. And so that, I'm seeing a significant progress there as well in terms of their offense. Uh, and, um, but yeah, the team defense was, was one that struggled last year. And I, and, it, and I'm, I hate to think what the, how good they're going to be next year. And you know, again, if they follow the path we took. And you mentioned PD. Obviously, not not his best game on, on Saturday. Sure. But, but how, how do you see this game as a big opportunity for him to have like a quick step? You know, like bounce back right away. It, it's it's big for us. And um, what's really important is again, as I said earlier, Syracuse's offense. Is, I don't know what the offensive efficiency rate is for the teams across the country, but I, watching them and seeing how many goals they're scoring. Um, and yet they don't have a massive statistical advantage at the faceoff X. They're putting the ball in the net at a high rate. And so we've got to keep that ball away from them. So P.D. LaSala understanding when to push the transition when he wins the ball versus when let's settle it, let's keep this 66. That's the key. Like we just, P.D.'s offensive transition success hasn't been what it's normally been. Yes, he had two goals against Carolina, but the other five games surrounding that, it just hasn't been there. And, and so, um, we got to know when to, you know, when to hold and when to fold and when to just put, give the ball to Cormier and then get out of the game and sub and play some 66 um, versus when we want to push that transition. Um, and I've got to be better. You know, if, if Pete gets in trouble using a timeout. People 